Good morning. Welcome to the Parenting Versus Podcast. Buenos dias, amigos. Uh, Lindsay <laughs> wanted to record a podcast this morning, so so we are. Yeah, well, we also haven't done it in a while, and there's a pigeon that's... I don't know if you know it stopped. <laughs> Wait, was the pigeon your inspiration? The pigeon was my inspiration this morning, yes. Um, you saw a pigeon... There he is, you hear him? That's not a it's pigeon, a that's a ring neck dove. Yeah. Um, no, I just thought it's a nice morning, we have time, we have coffee, mm-hmm. let's do this thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So here we are. My mom used to have pet doves. Two doves. What do you do with them? And uh, one was named Holy, the other one was named Spirit. Wow, that sounds <laughs> special. <laughs> yeah. So, we're drinking coffee, not beer. Yeah. The um, second best thing mm-hmm. closest to beer is coffee. Yeah, I think we've be we've been drinking our share of beer lately, though. I think mm-hmm. we should probably cut that out. Yeah, a little bit. We've been we need to slow it down. Some summer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we had a a nice little evening without kids the other night. Lauren's was parents, parents, parents did to the night. So we were like, what do we do with ourselves? Well, beer. That's always the first order of business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so we did. And we have a. Um, Membership to the most dingy bar in Albuquerque. It is a social requir- club. <laughs> requires <laughs> members only. Yeah. No, but that was cool though Bring because well, my my brother, he's the one that went there first. I didn't. I never knew about it. Yeah. Um, but they have some really good liquors there. I'm not a liquor person, but like yeah. good liquors, and it's not like overly priced. Well, if you're a member, you get like that's the whole thing is like your drinks are cheaper. Um, so, so that's the benefit. Yeah. The it uh, was other like, benefit is that you could just smell like an ashtray when you leave. Yeah. That's a plus. <laughs> um, uh, you're into so, that. Uh, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, so I don't know. Man, Albuquerque. Yeah. Things are changing. Things <clears throat> are moving. Things are definitely changing. Mm-hmm. I had a thought the other day. I wonder um, if part of growing pains for a city to get to be like next level next level I guess to yeah. level up is to go through an insane drug epidemic maybe like you always hear about that for you know bigger cities but uh well it's like New York in the 70s yeah so I mean yeah I don't know maybe it's just our turn to deal with some of the crap before we're things doing, get we're better. doing with some crap though um yeah. I follow on a social media a uh, person named uh, Roberto Rosales, I think is his name is. He's a photographer for the Albuquerque Journal. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's his name. But anyway, he takes the best pictures I've ever seen. He's a photojournalist, and oh yeah, Ro- Roberto Rosales is his name. Um, you can follow him, <clears throat> follow him on Twitter. Uh, it's uh, Rosa. It's R O S A L E S Q U I Q U E. At that, whatever. Anyways, like he he took some pictures yesterday, and he was driving home, and I'm showing Lindsay right now. But basically, he caught the, a picture of a dude in a Lakers jersey right underneath the Rio uh, Rio Grande exit um, thing, and he's <laughs> what running. In the world. Uh, and then the next thing Whoa. he caught was a state trooper, like pointing point, a gun at him. It's a taser. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, and he has something in his hand, but he's like, he's like, step up, cop. That's what it kind of looks like he's doing. He's definitely a homie. And then he's like, he's like turning over here like he's going to run this way. Where are you going to go, dude? <laughs> and then and then the next picture, he's, he's like... He's on the ground. He's on the ground, and then the state trooper's like, da-da-da. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, people but, are not the wisest sometimes. So that's part of the story, but then I was reading the response, and the guy's like, oh, my gosh, that was, was this on Tuesday? He's like, yes, it was nuts. He kept trying to open car doors as they were traveling through the scene. Oh, my god. He tried gosh. to get inside a U-Haul truck with a family driving through oh town. Oh, my gosh. Dude, Albuquerque, this is a side note. You got to stop this. Grow up. You got to stop doing crap like this. Yeah. It's not making you cool. Nobody's impressed. Mm-hmm. Knock it off, Albuquerque. It's dumb. Yep. It's embarrassing everybody. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and our, our current neighborhood sucks. Sucks. I hate it so bad. 
I hate it so bad. I hate it so bad. I hate it so hard. Um, <laughs> I think I do too. We had, okay, so we had kind of a, I don't want to say disappointing because I'm trying to be positive. We had a very um, frustrating week, I guess. Like, I'm not mad. I'm not as mad as I was the other day. Um, definitely some things fell through. And we were like, of course, this figures because this happens to us like 24-7. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you think people in our situations in other states make more money? I don't know. I can't even. I work in nonprofit. I'm the wrong person to ask. And I'm a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we had put an offer on a house. And it was contingent on a couple of things. They accepted the first offer, but with a few minor changes. It was looking promising. It was looking promising. We countered back and forth like once or twice. It was looking like we were going to reach an agreement. Um, it's a house we really liked. Mm-hmm. And, and our realtor called and he's like, hey, so Lindsay's getting a new job. I was like, yeah. Uh, I just talked to your lender. Um, it won't go through underwriting until she starts her new job and has a pay stub. We need a pay stub in hand. And to be and to be clear, like we had talked about this before. They knew I was starting a new job. They told us. They- it was my fault. They, well, no, not really. No, it was because they, uh, they did tell me that. It just kind of... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Forgot. Well, so anyway, we gave them the offer letter for my new job with my salary and my start date. And they had made it sound like that was sufficient. And so we put an offer on a house. And then come to find out, they were like, actually, we still need a first pay stub. And we were like, well, that's um, awesome. And that puts like a whole month-long damper on things. Mm-hmm. So we were like, well, we can ask the sellers if maybe they'll wait until beginning of September to close the deal and we'll still, everything else will still go through. We're just going to ask them to wait a month. I mean, I get that's asking a lot. So we asked them and they said no. And that part I understand. Like that part I was okay with. I was like, I get it. It's business. They want to see if any other fish will bite. I understand. But then I'm looking on Redfin and the same day they dropped the price of the house. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, if to, you would have... To below what we offered them. Below what we offered, yeah. So we, I'm like, you, if you would have waited a month, you would have made 3000 more dollars. But because you're impatient, like, I don't know. So kind of their loss, I guess. I guess it's not the house for us. Yeah. And what else went on this week? A little frustrating, though. <laughs> what a bunch of dicks. I'm serious. Like, who does that? I don't, I don't I'm like, so you, you're no, not I mean, I, I don't, enough to wait it out and make more money, yeah. but you're going to be so impatient that no, you're No, I, I don't blame them. Like, think about would you do that. I wouldn't. I would have done exactly what they did. I wouldn't. I would. It's that it's Especially, that whole, spe- especially if, the, I mean, you, you want to sell your house and like, oh, well, can we wait? Mm, I don't know. Well, but here's the thing. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of factors. That house is an estate sale, which means it's paid for, which means they're just sitting on it. So, like, what's one more month, mm-hmm. honestly? They're not paying anything on it. Other factor is, like, that phrase, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Yeah. Speaking of birds. um, It's like you're more secure in having something lined up than the prospect of hoping that there might be something better. Mm -hmm. So I was just kind of like, whatever, dude. I don't know. But, yeah, I was a little little irked. Yeah. Yeah. So we went through that, and, you know, at first you're like, well, I'm just this kind of sucks but then you you know i think we're, we're okay with it and looking around you know kind of reopening ideas of you know previous houses that we've seen buying a house is not fun selling a house is not fun i don't want to do this for a long time <laughs> certainly not another month but yeah so here we are anyways yeah i think the hardest part for me too with this whole thing is like I'm trying to prepare Luke, our six, our six-year-old. I almost said sixth grader. Wow, um, our six-year-old for like where he's going to go to school next year. And honestly, at this point, I'm like, I have no idea, hmm. because things have changed so many times. It's really hard to gauge that, and I yeah. feel like I'm doing a shoddy job as a parent because I can't prepare him. Mm-hmm. So. And throughout this whole ordeal, we're living with your parents. Yeah, and and my job, my work, my nonprofit is shutting down, so I have a lot of stress yeah. at work trying to get things tied up, and yeah, it's just a lot. Like, there's a lot going on. Um, yeah, you know. I guess if these are our problems, I'm gonna take it. Yeah, I mean, the, we have a job. Jobs. We're sitting on your parents' front porch, which is nice, and drinking coffee mm-hmm. while your parents have Luke in yeah. the ham, in the hammers. They took him <clears> camping. 
I told Luke, because um, Luke was pretty excited. But then we were going somewhere, and he asks me all kinds of questions, but the other day he's like, are there any dormant volcanoes, or are, are there any vol- volcanoes in New Mexico? I was like, yes, son. You are going to go to a volcano. In fact, you guys are going to camp in the caldera of the of the of the volcano. Oh, he's probably freaked out. And I told him that the, I, I told him that it wouldn't erupt. But you, if you, you go up, in, you don't know that. If you go up in the Jemez, you can still smell sulfur sometimes. Yeah. And there's hot. There's a bunch of hot springs, and yeah. it's pretty cool. But um, in the Jemez, there's the Valles Caldera, which is beautiful. Is, is it's beautiful, yeah. But it's basically where a giant mountain blew its top off, and they found parts of that mountain in, like, Kansas. So I was telling him about that, and he was like, oh, that's really cool. But uh, Speaking of Kansas, not really. <laughs> Speaking of Kansas, I'm going to Missouri. Yeah. No, I'm going to go see my brother in Missouri in the beginning of August. I'm pretty yeah. excited. I'm going to Hannibal, and I'm going to go to Columbia. You know, I'm kind of jealous. Are you? Of Missouri? Well, I just, I just, I just like to travel, but <laughs> well, you're going you know, to New York City, you jerk. I know, so, and that's uh, exciting too. But no, oh, I'm so jealous. I'm going to New York for a Yankees no, game, but I'm, I'd rather go to Missouri. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous that you get to fly into a little tiny rinky-dink airport. I've been there before. It's nothing special. I know. That's why, like, I always fly to like I don't know, DFW or uh, LGA or LAX or. You know, Whatever. actually, one of my favorite airports to fly into is Kansas City. Hmm. Just the layout, it's really easy to get in and out. Hmm. It's, I have the hiccups, it's set up really well. Hmm. Um, different. I'm trying to think of my favorite airport. Spent a lot of Can time. Can we talk airports real quick? Yeah. I like this. I've spent a lot of time in the Kansas City airport. Okay, let me, let me think of all the airports hold I've on, been to. Hold on, hold okay, on. Wait, wait. Quick story. Okay. One time, I was in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. With my brother, we were getting ready to fly back from Missouri. We were both in college, and um, we were coming back here. And we were there for our flight in Kansas City, and all of a sudden, everything shuts down. And they're like, hey, guess what? Air Force One is landing here. And we were like, what the hell? Like, we need to get somewhere. (laughs) And it was just like a random detour. Air Force One landed in Kansas City, and everything shut down for five hours. Wow. So we were in the airport for five hours, just like sitting at the Starbucks. Like, See, that sounds like fun to me. I like spending time. Not when you're a broke college kid. My dream would be, I mean, not with kids, because that would be a nightmare. (laughs) No. <laughs> but if I was traveling by myself, they're like, hey, your flight got delayed. You have to spend the night in the airport. I'm like, hell yeah. That would be so cool. Like Wi-Fi and like <laughs> laying not down. like a like, luxury situation. Maybe, maybe I'll be on the news. And like, maybe I'll yeah, be on the news Just sleeping. Uh, taking this one step at a time. But yeah, uh, You've really thought about what you're going to say. I like. This happens. <laughs> Just taking it one step at a time with Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Some people dream about like meeting celebrities. Lorenzo dreams about getting stuck at airports. Yeah. Um, speaking of Air Force One, though, uh, Donald Trump is he, he wants to he wants to do a couple of crazy things. One, he wants to give Air Force One a new paint job because it's not American enough. What the hell does that mean? Yeah, it's and, Air Force One. It's as American as it's gonna get. And he also wants to have a military parade that's gonna cost millions of dollars. Yeah, that's like some Hitler Stalin status yeah. stuff. I'm not down with that. Yeah. So, anyways, airports. Um. I do, I do like being in airports. I think that I, I'm not, <clears throat> I am not the most That's traveled person ever. In fact, I'm not traveled that much at all. But I, of the airports I've been to, I think that Albuquerque's airport is one of the most unique airports. True. And I like it. Pueblo style. Um, Pueblo revival. Yeah, we have all these little, all the chairs are like leather with like wood. It's like, you know, it's like Pueblo style. Has these really cool bricks. It's called Pueblo revival. Um, there's a lot of like sculptures and southwestern Deco. art. Um, it's kind of a cool, cool thing. But um, all right, let me start from the west coast and go east. <laughs> wow, people are shutting it off. <laughs> no, I mean people like airports. I like airports. I mean, I like uh, Portland. I've been to Portland. PDX has the best carpet. Um, Seattle. Hold on. <clears throat> well, hold drink on. your coffee. I'm I'm trying here. I'm yeah. Trying here. I'm trying. Okay, what? Um, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject with emotional feels about airports when I know about them. Mm-hmm. Because that's how I think of airports. Portland Airport reminds me of our old house that was built on and built on and built on. It has no rhyme or reason. That's probably true. But the thing about Portland is like people always take pictures of their feet on the carpet. Because it's god-awful carpet. 
but it's like a thing. So like whenever you step out into the Portland airport, there's people take a picture of their feet on this ugly carpet. We did it. It's a thing. Yeah, we did it too. <clears throat> um, Seattle, beautiful views from the Seattle airport. Yeah, it's nice. Do you remember when we had those like nugget things? We thought they were like fish sticks, mm -hmm. but they were like salmon. Fish dicks? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I, rem I remember it was there like was fish like... fish and chips, but it was like salmon and chips. Hmm. Probably cost like thirty thirty four dollars. It was $500. Airport food is Seattle, ridiculous. $500. Plan. I'm just kidding. Plan before you fly. I remember uh, flying somewhere and I was like hungry, like starving. I was like, okay, sweet. I don't have enough money, but there's a McDonald's right there. It's like 80 bucks. It's like Big Mac. $13. Mother. Uh, where are you going to get food, man? Um, where are you going to go? <laughs> You're stuck here. So You hungry? So, I like, at airports, going to see the different regional, like, coffee shops that are there. Mm -hmm. Like, I love Caribou Coffee. Mm -hmm. They are not here in New Mexico. They are not really anywhere that I go on a regular basis. You can buy their whole bean at Albertsons, though. Well, yes, but I love Caribou Coffee. Mm -hmm. So, if I can go to an airport, like Denver, and have some. Riley's like, been really quiet. Woo, woo. You want to go check on him? Sure. You're... Okay. you're hyped up Captain well man says, this is this is first cup i'm raring don't to stop go talking to my airports I to i'm not <laughs> i'm not going to um i like tully's coffee which is in airports pretty frequently i think there's one in las vegas i had a tully's coffee during my layover last time and it was delicious um yeah i like trying the different coffees in the different airports just because that's the kind of person i am i'm kind of a snob when it comes to coffee um no i there's a lot of really cool things although the other day Lorenzo and I were trying to buy my ticket to Missouri and I was originally going to fly into St. Louis and I found this roundabout flight. I didn't read the details like at all. I was like, oh, it's cheaper. Cool. Let's book it. Come to find out it was what they call a, um, oh my gosh, I can't even think of the term, but it's like a flight where basically you have like, like you change planes like five times. So I'm looking at this and it's like, I would fly from Albuquerque to Denver Denver to Las Vegas, I would have a five hour layover in Las Vegas, which honestly, if I knew somebody in Vegas or I was going to go hang out on the strip for a little bit, I'd be okay with, but it was like in the middle of the night. Um, and then I fly from Las Vegas to, I think, what did they say? Chicago or Dallas, something crazy. I think it was Dallas. And then from Dallas, I would go to Missouri and I would have gotten there the next day. And so I was like, oh crap. So I had to get on the phone. I had to like try to figure out how to undo what I did. It was like a call that was fielded to some call center in India. It was kind of hard to understand the lady. I was trying really hard to like understand and, and make sure that we were both on the same page. And eventually I had to cancel the flight, but it cost me 50 bucks. So it was not a good thing, but um, I got it taken care of. Now I'm flying into Columbia, Missouri, which is like by Mizzou, small airport, way easier than flying all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Lorenzo was not happy with me. No, oh, whatever. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> we bicker, we fight, we have a perfect marriage. It's all good. <laughs> uh -huh. um, all right, so I really, I, I, I'm excited about this. Okay, so you, you've said Portland, Seattle. <clears throat> yes. Portland, Seattle, LAX. Okay. Um, I've never been to San Francisco. Airport. To San Jose? Never been to San Jose. I think the I don't think I've ever flown to like the Los Angeles area. Every time I go there, I fly because it's close enough to. I mean, I, I close. It's close enough to drive. When I was six, mm -hmm. my parents, my brother was was. Um, well, no, my brother wasn't sick when I was six. But anyway, I was six years old. My parents put me on a plane by myself, and mm -hmm. I flew to Oakland to see my aunt. You were and six. Uncle. I was six. Dan, can you imagine putting Luke on a plane by himself? Well, they had like a stewardess, a flight attendant, like hmm. who sat with me and like, you know what I mean? It was yeah. like they, they arranged it. But yeah, I got wings. I got little wings. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, I flew from Portland to Oakland when I was six by myself. That's sweet. Yeah. I would have loved to do that. Yeah. Um, I visited my cousins for like a week. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've never been to, never been in a... So the t this time we went to LAX was the first time I've been to LAX. Really? Yeah. So wow, I didn't know LAX, that. LAX. Uh, so LAX a lot. along the West Coast, uh, SeaTac, uh, PDX, LAX. Uh, I've been to, and then moving east, I've been to the Phoenix Airport, the Sky Harbor. 
Yeah. Um, I don't mind the Phoenix Airport yeah. either. It's okay. ABQ, us, uh, the Sunport. I've been to Denver's airport. Denver's airport is by far the creepiest. I think that, I mean, it's yeah, notably the, the, creepy. The blue horse with the red eyes doesn't help. No, and then, um, and then it has the people with, like, the gas masks on their faces. Yeah, the, and you're like, the okay, murals Denver? are really weird. Like, what are we preparing for over here? Yeah. Um, I've been like, to... Welcome to Denver. It might be hell. Right. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> the altitude's affecting you. Um, <laughs> you can come, but you'll never leave. <laughs> stabbed by a stoner. That should be a name, uh, like a punk rock band. Stabbed by a stoner. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll write that one down in case we decide to start a <laughs> punk band. <laughs> Uh, so I've been to Dallas, um, Houston, Kansas City. We f did we f no 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 we didn't fly to Kansas City to Portland when we lived in Missouri. We flew out of St. Louis. So I've been to St. Louis. Um, moving east, I've been to Atlanta. Uh, Chicago, I've been to oh yeah I've been to Chicago O'Hare. I've been to the main Chicago one, which is what what is it? Uh, Midway. Oh, no, so O'Hare is the, ma the main, and the Midway is, like, the secondary. Yeah. You know what's so, funny? I've been to Midway and O'Hare. I was at O'Hare when I was a kid. I was, like, mm -hmm. nine. And the only thing I remember about the airport was, like, how high-tech the bathrooms were. Mm. Like, the toilets were, like, the, the sensor flush by themselves toilets. Yeah. They had, like, a crazy rotating door that was, like, moving by itself. Like, it was just, like, I remember being, like, this is the future. Yeah. Like... <laughs> I love airports. <laughs> yeah, there's the... Uh, so, I've been to those two, and then moving east, I've been... So O'Hare, Midway. Do you want to know what my least favorite airport is? Let's talk about it in a second, because I want to tell you. Okay, too. Well, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a, can I get a refill while you're thinking? Of... I wanted you to hear this. Okay. Um. What's Riley doing? He's eating a waffle. Here. Watching TV? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, no, he's not watching TV yet. What? Well, I'm he probably really... turned off. The... I'm trying to cast a I'm... show, and it looks like he turned off the TV. So, anyways, do you want to, do you want to pause it real quick? And we'll, we'll pick this up in a second. All right, let's do a quick parenting pause to make sure our kid's not burning the house down. All right. Okay, we're back. We're back. Um, airports. So I've gone through all of them, basically, except for the last two, uh -huh. which is JFK and LaGuardia. LaGuardia. And um, my first uh, encounter with that word LaGuardia was Ninja Turtles, the original Ninja Turtles from 1992? I don't know. You're no. Asking me wrong. 1989, I think that movie came out. Um, 82? Yeah, right. No, 90, I said 92. Oh, sorry. It's I was 80, like... 89, I think, or 88. Um, but uh, there's a guy in a cab there in New York. Uh, I think Raphael's like chasing um, Casey. Uh, what's his last name? Casey, the hockey dude. Um, and uh, Casey jumps over a cab, and then the turtle, and then uh, Raphael rolls over the hood, and the cab driver's like, I don't know. I, I'm horrible at recreating movie scenes, but he, the cab driver's like, you still want to go to LaGuardia? And he's like, that's, and, that, and that's my first encounter with the word LaGuardia. Anyways, those are my, those are my, those are my airports. Um, you were going to say your least favorite. Oh, my least, <clears throat> wow. My least favorite is Houston, I think. Hmm. Why? It's big. It's hard to get around. It's muggy. It's just huge. It's like not a pleasant experience ever <laughs> to go to Houston, I feel like. <laughs> um, I went to Panama's airport, well, twice. Panama City? Yeah, it's it's interesting because like when I got off the plane... Was it a nice airport? It wasn't terrible. But you have to step on these little mats that are like disinfectant mats. Huh. Um, you know, because if it's an international flight, they want to make sure you're not carrying any strange weird bacteria I guess with you on your shoes so you have to step on these like disinfectant mats and then the, I remember the air just being stifling like humid and 
In the airport? Yeah. More? It's, it's, yeah, really humid. Um, and then they have guards with, like, machine guns. Oh, fun. <laughs> Which is kind of intimidating if you've never seen... Well, you're not going to mess around. Like that, yeah. It's like, oh, and there's this dude over there with, like, a machine gun. No big deal. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, so. you know, whatever, like, they got to protect the airport. Mm -hmm. I think there was, like, an airport shooting in the United States a couple years ago. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. It was, like, Orlando or... I can't remember That's somewhere in Florida. Isn't it but, always uh, Florida? Yeah. So Houston's your least favorite. Yep. Um, I have two least favorites. Oh, I forgot about one airport that I've been in. Reno. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were just there. Because Reno is one of my least favorite airports. The views are nice in Reno. Because yeah. Reno is a really pretty city. But the slot machines and the casinos and all that stuff, like, kind of... I mean, it is the reason, I guess, Reno is even the thing. Like the gambling, but it's the biggest little city in the world. Yeah, Reno was not a bad town. It seemed like it was nice. Like there was you know mountains all around, and Tahoe's close by. But um, just walking through the airport, and you're like walking through a casino terminal. It's like it's like a half-assed yeah. Las Vegas. <laughs> and then Las Vegas just sucks. Yeah, it's I think Las Vegas there. is worse than Reno because there are no views. Um, it's yeah, I hate Las Vegas. I just do. oh, you know who else's airport is actually kind of nice is Boise. Never been to Boise. It's uh, it's pretty easy to navigate. Yeah, it's yeah. not bad. Um, favorite airport would I think Denver's, even though it's creepy, it uh, it is well designed. I feel like, um, as far as like the way things flow, yeah, it's, it's easy not to like get pretty to look at. Like the like the tents kind of feel like it's like not finished. Like they put the tents in, up. It, they're supposed to. The, the architect was like supposed to. It, the thought was like it's supposed to be kind of like a Rocky Mountains, like the yeah. you look, look like mountains, but it just looks like you're going to a circus. <laughs> I don't know. An Anyways. apocalyptic circus. Yeah, apocalyptic. <laughs> so maybe Denver is not my favorite, but um, I think Seattle was probably yeah. one of my favorites. Um, Atlanta is weird because it's like huge. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I would I would say maybe Seattle. I remember LaGuardia just being dirty. Yeah. Like, it was just filthy. And I was like, I don't want to touch anything. I don't want to be around all these people. Right. I just want to get the hell out of here. Yeah. Like, as fast as I can. Maybe Albuquerque is the best airport in the nation. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Take it easy. No, because if you think about it, like, can you imagine getting off your flight at somewhere like Atlanta? Which, by the way, Atlanta, I think, is the busiest airport in the world. Go oh. Google it. Google it. Google it. Consult um, the Google can you imagine getting off your flight in Atlanta, like a connecting flight? If you fly from Albuquerque anywhere, a lot of times Atlanta is a connecting flight or Dallas mm -hmm. or, or Denver or Phoenix. Um, but getting off, your, getting, off your, you know, getting off your airplane and your connecting flights in like 20 minutes, but it's like four terminals over. You yeah. have to take a train. You have to bustle through crowds. That's, that's how I feel like Houston yeah. is. Like, you have to haul ass no matter where you're going. Yeah. It's never Also, pleasant. Houston has giant, like, it, you feel like you're in a ranch. Yeah. I guess that's, you know, they're staying true to their ranchness, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, but, yeah, it sucks. In Albuquerque, you're like, you get off your plane, and if, I don't know if any flights ever connect in Albuquerque. Can you imagine? I don't think that ever happens. We are a very small hub. Unless you're flying lot. to, like, I don't know, Roswell. <laughs> you might connect in Albuquerque. Fancy um, pants. <laughs> so. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> go to Roswell, are you? Hey. Hey there. Big shot. <laughs> <laughs> so. Did I just say big shot? That's like a dad shot. joke. Somebody called me pal on Twitter. Pal? Pal. Like, I'm not your pal, buddy. Yeah. Bro, tiger. Twitter is a hostile place, by the way. Twitter is an angry place. It is. So I, I listen to I two... I stay out of the Twitter sphere for the most part. I don't... Yeah. I don't go into I've that. I've been in podcasts for about, I don't know, six years, because since Luke was born. Um, and a couple of the podcasts that I got into first was Bad Christian Podcast, which is uh, Matt Carter, Joey Stenson. We know Stenson, who it is. And... <laughs> Let me see, Matt, Joey, oh, and uh, Toby Morell. They're from a band I like called Emery. They're a screamo. We know. And whatever, I like the podcast. I've been listening to it for a while. A lot of people can't handle it because it's 
They're they're a bit abrasive. They're it's they, they, they also they, have they, really obnoxious southern accents that are hard to sit there. And I like to. their southern oh, accents. I when I meet somebody from the south, I feel like I'm getting a warm language hug. Um, it's like gravy. It's like gravy and biscuits. Biscuits. Bix it. <laughs> yeah, Riley says biscuits. Biscuits. The, 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 the other day, Luke was, or Riley was begging me for a biscuit. Dad, I want a biscuit. <laughs> um. So I, I like their southern accents. I like their I, I I do like their podcast. I think they have a lot of good things to say. But they're one of my favorites. Another one of my favorites is the liturgists. But they're slowly turning into something that I'm not sure about. The antagonists, um, perhaps. <laughs> and on Twitter, they were kind of hostile at each other. These two two of the hosts from the podcast. One was Science Mike. Uh, and then the other one was Matt Carter. Like they were kind of talking with each other in re in response to a tweet that somebody from a band I used to like, uh, Classic Crime, who also has a podcast called Don't Feed the Trolls. Um, wait, no. Does he have that podcast? He might. But they were, it was just weird. Like watching these this anger or whatever it is like unfold on Twitter and people are just, people are just, not nice to each other on the Twitter. On the Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's just the world. You don't. Living. You don't do the tweets. No, I do not tweet. You do do the Facebook though. You do the, the you Facebook. Do, you do do the Facebook. You do do the Facebook. Um, I'm not on Facebook very often. Yeah, I kind of wish I wasn't. To be honest with you. Yeah. I don't know. People are very opinionated, and I don't feel like people are willing to listen very much and myself included when you when you're on when you're on social media you kind of just you get you get that uh shot of whatever it is endorphins adrenaline whatever i don't I, know a, a little bit of brain happiness when somebody either likes or responds to something that you say it's because it's a mental reward system yeah kind of is um no i like instagram because it's just i don't want to say like it's artistic but i mean you're, it's visual mm -hmm. like there's only so much people can say on instagram and really it's just like a picture's worth a thousand words you can tell what they're thinking or what they're talking about or what they're what's on their mind based on the pictures they take do you have an agenda on facebook i mean on instagram like what is when you're posting something what are you thinking like are you trying to make people jealous no a lot of times i just put pictures of our kids because i want to have like a running like chronological like photo album yeah. you know what I mean yeah it's kind of where I'm thinking like I want you know someday my kids to be able to look back and see like oh wow that's when I was a baby oh wow yeah. that's when I was two. Oh wow you know I usually avoid posting pictures of kids on Instagram and I maybe maybe I, maybe I shouldn't have that attitude but I always think people I, I I've, I've looked at Instagram as like an artistic like photography yeah. sort of deal um and I try to I try to post something that I feel is like worthy of you know being artistic praise. liked i guess um and i know a lot of people complain about pictures of kids and i, I, don't, I know. don't really care what people think to be honest i mean like yeah. i could give two shits i know it sounds not very nice but it's true yeah. um i do it for me i don't really do it for anybody else no i got you so you know you yeah. can take it or leave it yeah but <sighs> but it, like, on instagram i I, you know, I try to just post pictures that are I get annoyed nice. on Instagram when people post pictures of, like, food all the time. Like, one hmm. here or there is okay. Like, oh, I had this really cool thing from this restaurant. Check it out. You should go there. I actually like pictures of food. But it's like some people just post pictures of, like, their meals. And I'm like, dude, nobody hmm. cares what you had for breakfast today. Hmm. Like, it's just, like, eggs and bacon that you made at your house. Nobody cares. We all know what that looks like. Hmm. You know? They just love food. I get it. I mean, that's fine, but like... People... I saw something on the internet. It's like a Iowa thing or a South Dakota thing or something up there. Um, you get a Pop-Tart and you put a piece of like just craft American, like the sliced processed cheese. cheese. Yeah. And it's supposed to be the best thing ever. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, that is a very Midwestern thing. Hmm. They also put cheese on their apple pie. Hmm. So... We put green chili on our apple pie here. Yeah, well, see, it's yeah, it's just a regional thing. It's they like right. cheese mm -hmm. in the Midwest, um, and gravy and grits and okra. Mm, okra. I'm gonna go to Gumby's. Do when it. I go to Missouri. 
do I it. I told my brother, I was like, I get off that plane, you know what I want to do first thing? I want to go to Gumby's. And he's get a, like, get a p- pitcher of PBR. Hell yeah, and then I want to get some delicious beer. Mm-hmm. I mean, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Get some delicious beer. <laughs> Drink that Pilsner with all your heart. I will, all my heart. Um, yeah. You no. don't have to worry about like Bible college people spying on you. <laughs> if there are Bible college people there looking at me for drinking a PBR, I'm going to say, cheers, biatch. Don't go to Bible college people. Yeah, don't do that. Um, you're not an adult if you go to a Bible college. No, you're reduced to a child who has a curfew at 20. See, this is what this is what cracks. I, I guess it's your decision if you want to go to a Bible college like that's No what you're saying. Just know, up for. yeah, exactly. Um I didn't you're know. treated like a child if you're yeah. in Bible college. You have a curfew, which is nuts. Like when you were telling me that, I was like, "No, you don't have a curfew. You're you're an adult." Yeah. Um but you have a curfew. One night I slept in a van because yeah. I was like, I'm not going to go check in late for curfew because then I'm going to get in trouble. And I'm going to get like a, I forget what they call them, like not a demerit, but like a, a written warning. I'm like, I'm 23 freaking years old. Like I don't, this is bull crap. Um, mm-hmm. I just slept in my friend's van and I was like, whatever. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. Forget everything about that. But I don't know. Uh, forget everything about that. Forget everything about that. I don't know. College. Also make sure that they're actually an accredited college for what you want to do. Yeah. Um, because a lot of them will be accredited for like seminary school or theological studies, but not actual college so like credits. like religious places, but not like if you want to get a job somewhere. Like, if you want to get a real job. If you want to go outside of the Christian bubble, like you're out of luck. Yeah, you're screwed. Um, I was going to get my TESOL certification at the Bible college because they had a, a thing where you could get your T-Sol thing and I was like cool real world skills like gonna use that because mm-hmm. I like traveling I like teaching and I like teaching people English mm-hmm. well they were like well you have to get um, one of our bachelors first and then you can sign up for the T-Sol program and I was like that's bull crap I can yeah. sign up for a T-Sol program online and finish it in like six months like I'm not gonna if you wanted to be a pastor could you go to them and say yeah I want to be a pastor I mean, give me the classes yeah if that's what you want to do like if you're a woman no, yeah, right. Central Christian College of the yeah. Bible, they're like Church of Christ. They would never do they that. Would never. They would never. Hmm. Yeah. I almost got kicked out of Bible College. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, our college experiences are very different. Um, well, I went to but Port- we, Portland what, State before that. <laughs> what we had in common is we didn't really know what we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And now here we are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. You know, I was I had um, coffee yesterday with a lady um, from APD, the Albuquerque Police Department. She's kind of a business colleague of mine. And I had coffee with her, and I was talking to her about the academy. Because I guess they're going through some major changes. They're trying to do some more recruitment, mm-hmm. and they're trying to kind of restructure the whole thing. I feel like they're doing a good job, like a better job. Well, there's a restructure that happened. Yeah. They, have a, they have a new police chief. Uh, it was funny. Um I was, I, I mentioned, we were talking about the police last night, mm-hmm. and I guess a lot of their crimes have gone down. Mm-hmm. Um, property crimes, car thefts, like all these metrics that they follow, except for homicide. Homicide went up a tick, mm-hmm. but a bunch of the other ones went down, and I, and I kind of complimented um, uh, Mayor Tim Keller. Yeah. Oh, my parents were not having yeah. that. <laughs> They're like... My mom's like, well, I'm like, oh, dear God. But anyway, yeah, so she she sees it from the inside. Right. Well, she said there was a lot of political crap that was going on before. They had to kind of sort through the garbage and restructure, which they've yeah. done. Mm-hmm. But she said she joined the academy at 38. Hmm. And I was like, whoa, really? And she's like, yep, and I'm about to retire in about five years. And I was like, cool. Did she? Did she start off, like, in a cruiser? Doing um, traffic just, stops. And well, stuff? you have to. Huh? After you get out of academy, like you have to do like two or three years with traffic, mm. and then you can move laterally to whatever unit you decide you want to work on. So she's seen some stuff, then I'm sure. Oh yeah, um, she's in the crisis intervention unit now, and she's like, it's way different than anything I've ever done. It's less, um, like she doesn't go out and like arrest people. Like she has the authority to do that, but that's not their primary job. Does she wear a badge everywhere she goes? She has a badge. She had her uniform on yesterday. Um, like full uniform? It's casual though. It was like a it was like a polo shirt with the APD logo on it, and then mm. the pants with like mm. the cuffs and the. Yeah. But she doesn't carry. Well, she wasn't carrying a gun yesterday. I don't know. Maybe she does. It's just concealed. I have no idea. But, yeah. um, 
yeah, so she joined the academy at 38, and I was like, dang. And she's like, yeah, and I wasn't the oldest person there. She's like, you know, because there's this guy that um, I know through the grapevine through another professional contact. Mm -hmm. He joined the police academy at 50. Whoa. And graduated with, like, honors. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's doable. <laughs> Yeah, I would have to get my ass in gear though if I was going to do that. Um, that would, I'm, I'll be honest, that would freak me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would need to get in shape. I couldn't. I used to want to be a cop. I, I've always kind of toyed with the idea. If yeah. they'd have me. Yeah. Um, Tim Keller like posted this thing, retweeted a, uh, an Albuquerque police uh, tweet, and it says the Albuquerque uh, at ABQ police. It says. We have a record number of bait cars since Mayor Keller came into office. Officers arrested 24 people in bait cars. So far this year, officers had made 394 auto theft related arrests and recovered, whoa, holy crap. They've recovered 2,000, the, the holy crap part wasn't part of the tweet, 2,008 stolen vehicles. Mm -hmm. Hyundai, Sonata, and Elantra are usually the top of the list. So, first of all, Albuquerque police have recovered 2,008 vehicles guys that so is insane albuquerque has a huge property yeah. crime problem and a huge auto theft yeah. problem it is yeah it, it has been like this for a while and then and then and then twitter <laughs> steps in uh guy this guy you guys i'm mad this guy michael <laughs> farrell smith says this is entrapment bait cars lure young people into the system and ruin lives i thought better of you tim keller and how, <laughs> wait, i'm sorry hold on wait wait, wait. how how do bait cars lure people unless you're a criminal who is looking to steal a car like let's be honest they only lure the type of people that want to steal a car so he i don't know i don't know what this dude wants but it was funny somebody replied maybe they shouldn't be stealing cars that's exactly how i feel <laughs> from at uh i'm tamale i'm a tamale <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna follow I am a tamale. They just earned a follower. Good yeah. work. Um, no, but seriously, how is that entrapment? Like, it's only entrapment if they're like, yeah. like you know, like saying, oh, hey, come on into this car and take a free ride. No, you're not going to be in trouble. And then they arrest them. Yeah. No, entrapment is that. What right. it is not is when you are already set out to steal a car and you steal a car and get caught. Right. Oh, my gosh. What a load of baloney. So, anyways. so freaking stupid sometimes. Yeah. I approve, I approve Tim Keller. He's <laughs> really mad. T Tim Keller, he, it doesn't, I don't feel like he's trying to appease his party. I feel like he's going across party lines and stuff like this that. This is why I'm not on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm all angry now and I'm like, oh, if I find you, buddy, yeah. game on. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah, you can't have a conversation with somebody on Twitter. It just turns into a shouting match. You can't have like a night, like if you disagree with somebody, it's going to be full blown, like nastiness mm -hmm. i i tried to have a conversation with somebody on twitter who is like is a leader Indeed. who is a, a big person in the hashtag x evangelical realm was it that? uh and she's the one that called me pal and she said swear words at me hurt you know, my, it hurt my feelings you know what, how you should have responded to that which would have been really i shouldn't even have engaged true but. if she's gonna call you pal because i feel like I know who that person was, and she's very pro-feminist, pro-this, pro-women, which is great. Good job. Um, but you're not, you're not a feminist by knocking down men, like, mm -hmm. or a male character, because there right. are good men out there. Yeah. That doesn't make you, ripping down men because they're men does not make you a good feminist. Yeah. Um, you know what would have really gotten under her skin is if you would have responded with gal. Mm. <laughs> that would have probably. Tits. Tits. Nah. He sugar no. tits. <laughs> no. You can do that. Not me. <laughs> hey, sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah, no, I... I've always under, not Twitter, understood... Twitter's just gross. Like, like, women that feel like being a feminist means you have to rip down, like, for, like for, men. For me to be equal, I have to... I have to knock you down a notch or whatever. Like degree, because there are good men out there. I mean, I have sons, and like I would, I would be really offended if somebody was like, "Oh, because they're boys, they're they're gonna grow up to be crappy men." It's like, well, yeah. no, and they're and, raised by a female too. So give me some credit and give them some credit. Yeah, you know. And some people that some people suck. Some a lot of men suck, um, as adults and as kids. And you have, you also have to think about how people are raised to like how you're raised is how how you're 
you know brought up is it, it plays a big role in how you treat mm-hmm. other people so so, I, so I would say like for me it's tempting to say oh yeah I'm a feminist but really mm-hmm. what I am is like pro female empowerment yeah I see a I see a pendulum and it's kind of weird like yeah um, there's a lot of men who don't respect women and are 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 butts all the time and they feel entitled to women and and their bodies and all this other stuff I see it because I'm a I'm a teacher at a high school mm-hmm. and these little these little boys they treat women like that and I I always call it out well that's what Jen and I were talking um, our friend Jen last night we were yeah. talking to her daughter who's 13 about kind of that yeah and boys these little boys feel like they're entitled to these these girls bodies and like they you know whatever and they're conditioned to do that it's probably because of how they're raised and the culture they're raised in also all this stuff and a lot of stuff involved well, machismo there culture does that. um but I, I also kind of wonder like the resistance to that is to treat men like knock them down a few pegs so is it going to be the other way in 20 years 20, 20 30 years is it going to be like women are going to be stepping all over men like it's a completely reactive and reactionary situation it's not proactive i'm not an expert i don't know yeah so whatever <laughs> all right conversation Silence. killer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know i think that we have sons and a daughter so we have an opportunity to teach them both like how mm-hmm. to treat the opposite sex with respect yeah you know and model it at home yeah so i mean that's i guess in in a way that's kind of a benefit mm-hmm. i don't know the other day i was laying in bed and i was just kind of thinking i've had a lot to think about this summer yeah but i'm not young <laughs> and it kind of hit me you're 35 it's youngish i'm not young okay <laughs> young i'm not young 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 <laughs> how do you say it young young no you really emphasize the G. <laughs> young i think about like carl young when you say it like that young like, uh, young huh j-u-n-g thanks for, thanks for pointing out how i speak you're very um, mexican i'm not young I'm just not, and I was thinking about how um, it feels like not that long ago I was 20, and now I'm 35. That was 15 freaking years ago. Yeah. Um, That's crazy. And uh, I should be, you know, I have all these expectations. I should be this or I should be that. And right now I'm in limbo, sleeping in a house that's not mine. Um, and my kids are there too. And it's just, it, it, it's, I'm grateful. Like we were talking about a couple of minutes ago. I'm grateful my problems are not that bad problems. But not that it bad just, problems? Not that, not, not. Terrible how, problems? Not, I don't know. Not, not that you don't feel like They're the not the worst problems. That bad. Um, I don't know. It just kind of, it kind of. You have to always remember that. Somebody, I get in these slumps. Somebody would, there's always somebody out there that would trade yeah. you for your problems. Yeah, for sure. You know? Sometimes, like, do you ever feel like sometimes, and now since we're late in the podcast, I can get deep. Yeah, get deep on us. Um, Let's go. I'll sing in a minute, too. Oh, please don't do that. Uh, Luke's not here to do this. <laughs> um, does, your, does your heart ever just, like, hurt? All the time. Just because, I don't know, like, situations, mm-hmm. or you don't feel like, you don't feel good enough, or you're not in a, you're not in a place where you want to be, or yes. whatever? In the third grade, I wanted to be the first female president. Mm -hmm. In the sixth grade, I wanted to be on Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I know those are stupid dreams, but I'm like... In the 10th grade, you did not want to move to Albuquerque. Word. (laughs) Now here you are. Here I am, and I'm still here. Yeah. Um, You know how... Okay. I used to want to be a pro soccer player at one point, and then Mm -hmm. I tore my ACL, so that was out. Like... I used to be a really good soccer player. And yeah. that was the one thing I had that I was like, this is going to carry me. Like, yeah. this is going to carry me through college. This is going to get me where I want to go. Mm-hmm. And, like, that got taken away. And then and then we moved to mm-hmm. Albuquerque. And so I kind of felt angry mm-hmm. and, like, really gypped on life. Right. Um, I'm definitely a cynical person. And so that can be dangerous yeah. in the wrong conditions. Like, it can just be really yeah. toxic. I'm, for the most part, not cynical. But I've been feeling pretty cynical recently, and well, I, I don't I don't think I have a right to feel that way. I get in these modes where it's like not poor me, but like oh, it figures the like what would go wrong will. Like we were talking the other day about having the other shoe drop. Mm-hmm. 
I'm always looking for the other shoe. Yeah. And maybe that's not a great way to act, but I feel like... It's, I mean, what else do you expect? I think we have a lot in common with that. And you, your dad was good. He had a little bit of empathy for us. He's like, your generation has different problems than our generation. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but our entire, both of us, I think we relate on this. Our entire lives, we've wanted some victories here and there. Even just small ones. And there have been a few. You know, we're not, like, on the streets and, like, you know, we're not... It's it's not super bad, like, if you think about it. But we want those small victories, like a phone call saying you got the job or... Um, they accepted your offer on the house. Congratulations. Yeah. Or, like, in the beginning of the summer, we were gung-ho about moving to a city that we both love and, like... Being able to drink. say you're going to do something and actually being able yeah. to do it with the right, like... Tools. So these so these little setbacks, I mean, they're setbacks. They're not, like, devastating. Um, but they start to stack up and you just start feeling like, man, mm-hmm. like, defeated, deflated. And then you start taking it out on each other and you start taking it out on your kids. And, and like, then you start comparing yourself yeah. to other people, which is the worst yeah. thing to do. Like, I realize I do that and it's mm-hmm. like... I have to watch myself because yeah. when I am well, it's, in that it's spot... E- it's easy to do because you're like, why, you why look, am I so different than you? Or and you why? look at some people and you're yeah. like, it feels like it's so easy for them. Yeah. Like everything they want, they get. Or everything they ask for, it falls into their lap. And here you are yeah. like, you know, 35, living at your parents. You thought you had a plan and that whole thing fell apart. Yeah. And now you're like, well, what the fuck do I do now? Like, <laughs> Or you're dreaming about something like not even extravagant. Something simple. Something pretty modest. You're dreaming about it and then like it doesn't go through. And you're like... yeah. And, and then you feel like a failure because you don't even want to dream anymore. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry if that sounds depressing. Like, you know, I think the the, pers- the thing is perspective. Like, I'm sure there's people that are dreaming about things that we have that we don't even realize. It's hard to see that when you're in the middle of it, though. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's times where I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm just dreaming about, like, being able to do something simple, you know? Like... Oh, I wish I could afford to, like, I think at our old house, you know, like, I wish I could afford to paint our house or I wish I could afford to do something with the front yard, like Mm -hmm. call a landscaper and do something. It's a simple thing. It's, it's materialistic. I get that. You see other people. Oh yeah. Well, we just went ahead and called this and this is what happened. And now it's done. Yippee. We're so happy. We put grass in our backyard. And I'm like, yeah, that would be awesome if we could afford that. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, it's a simple dream sometimes but i just feel like i'm tired of even having like the simple dreams knocked yeah. down like <laughs> like it would be really nice to live in a place where i wouldn't find a coke bottle full of needles in my front in the front seat of my car yeah or i don't know it's like it, there's things that have happened this year that have just like really added insult to injury i feel yeah. like like us not getting and the so, house the other day the mm-hmm. straw for me was not that we didn't get the house it was that they dropped the price right after they rejected us and i was yeah. like what the hell like rubbing salt in the wound yeah exactly yeah social media doesn't help either like because you, you kind of stack up try i mean you end up trying to stack up to whatever it is that that is and you see these pictures of these beautiful places um where people live and like the 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 life that their kids get to go through and our kids you know it, it, Al, i don't like to talk bad about albuquerque it's just i don't know i've been here all my life and since i was since i was little like i always liked to go different places right and i've always since i was a kid wanted to at least try to live somewhere different like we lived in missouri for a little bit and that was hard but i actually really enjoyed experiencing something different Mm -hmm. just because and it's not a it's not a diss on albuquerque i like albuquerque i like new mexico it's always going to be home but the other day i was uh going for a run around uh the academy just to kind of clear my head and try to get a little bit of exercise trying to work off some beer calories (laughs) and i just was like i gave up at that po- at that point, I'm like, I'm not gonna move. Yeah. I'm here. I'm. I, this is where my kids are gonna grow up. This is where I'm gonna live. I'm not gonna. I mean, I I can't try to. Res- I I can't try to go with that like desire that's like ingrained in me to want to live somewhere else. I've tried to be. I try. I've tried to go to Portland twice. I've tried to go to San Diego once when I was in college. I've tried. I've thought about moving to Denver. Like it's. 
it's not going to happen right now. Like, it's it, it's hard because it feels like it's it's not that it's not going to happen, but it's not going to happen for us. Mm. Like, and I and I, I know that's a negative attitude, but yeah. Um, you know, we have friends, and it's hard not to compare because they literally say, "Oh, we want to move here," and then magically their house sells in like less than twenty four hours, and they get to go. Mm-hmm. And we're like, "Wow, that was like stupid easy for you." And for us, it's like we're clawing tooth and nail, like just to try to like figure it out. And it just feels like we don't catch a break sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to have that attitude no. for my kids, but it's hard because I feel like yeah. we've been beaten down over and over and over again. Right. Anytime any, we, we go to a, a church and a couple of community groups and anybody, anytime anybody asks like, oh, how can we pray for you or whatever? I'm like, man, just pray that. I, we pray that some... we don't lose our shit because we're right there. <laughs> pray for some victories because like. We're like, I don't know. We want a couple of just good bits of news. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like we're always waiting for the bad news and we always yeah. get it, but it's not always just bad news. It's like worse news. Yeah. Um, and it'd I, be nice I, to get some good news sometimes. Are we complainers? Yeah, are we maybe. just, are we just, do, when people come in contact with us, are they just totally bummed out? I hope not. But <laughs> I mean, I feel like we're human beings and I feel like this is a podcast. And if you don't like what we're saying, you can turn it off and go about your business. No, but I'm, I'm just saying in, in general, like when we, when we talk to people, are we bummers? I hope not. Yeah. Um, because sometimes I feel like a bummer because I have a lot to complain about and I, I do have a lot to be grateful for yeah but i don't know like i it just i don't know i think it's i think it's you need to have a healthy outlet and it's okay to vent yeah because i know that this has been something we've been dealing with all summer and it's been hard for us and we haven't really had an outlet my i love my parents living with them is okay but Mm -hmm. like my mom is like perpetually pollyanna positive like yeah like i love her but sometimes it's like it's, too it, much. It's, it's okay to lament sometimes. It's, it's healthy. Yeah. Well, and I can't repress that sometimes. Yeah. Like, I just need to let it out, and then I feel better. Yeah. You know? Like, I feel better yeah. after I let it out. But if I can't let it out, and it's just repressed and repressed and repressed. Do you have a hard time, like, being okay with who you are? Me as an individual or yeah. me as a... Just who you are. Um. Like, how do you feel... I didn't hear mommy. Yes. Riley? Oh, they're in the car. They're in the house. In the car. I was like, whoa. Um, oh, it's Those kids. Our kids. Okay. Not our kids. <laughs> I heard mommy too. So. Um, do I feel okay with who I am? I would say. Especially when you're hanging out with. Okay. I, I, do, I do love our church. Mm-hmm. But it's pretty, it's pretty white. It's upper and it's, middle class and white, and it's pretty. If you if, if you <laughs> if you encounter somebody at our church, a lot of times I feel like they're. And this is me again comparing myself, and it's wrong and it's bad, and I realize that. Just but, say it and um, get it out, and then we'll. When you encounter it. somebody at our church, most of the time, they're doing pretty well. I don't know. But is that their fault? I mean, it, no, it's, it's not, not their like fault. It's just feel bad, but. That, no, they're not. But, it, but it's I, hard I, not to compare. If you're in a conversation with these people, like, do you feel less? As a man, okay, I'm, I'll tell you. As a man, I do. See, I think it's different for me because I'm a female. We 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 go to we go to church with people who work at work at the labs or in the air force or are scientists or whatever. Actors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actors and when like we're semi successful actors. <laughs> and we go to a brewery and I'm like, man, I really hope my card goes through. Hope it don't get declined again. Well, our cards don't really get declined. But. Uh, <laughs> there, there have been moments though where I'm like, oh, our bills are paid, which is great, and I'm so happy that our bills but are now paid. Now we have no money. And now I really want a beer, and I'm gonna go out with these people who are crazy successful. <laughs> They're like inviting and, you to uh, hang out, and you're like, I might not be able to afford. And to I'm gonna try to buy this beer, and let's just hope that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I have been to the grocery store, and I'll just be full. I'll just be full. You know, I'm okay. I'll just be honest. Right. I've been in the grocery store. Um, I've been at a grocery I've store. Been, <laughs> I don't know why I'm putting on that. I don't know. Uh, I, I've gone to the grocery store, you know, had a, had a full basket of groceries, and the lady's like, 
I don't know, something's wrong with the card. It's not going through. Like, you know, they try to be nice about it. Yeah, like, it's I'm not... I'm like, well, like, shit. You're not a cheap ass. It's the card's fault, but really you're a cheap ass. I'm like, well, shit. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to call my bank, and there's got to be something wrong. I have money. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't have any freaking money. I'm a teacher. This is who I, I am. Think, I think that that's where I get a little bit um, bitter. Yeah. Like... Like, I work in nonprofits, and I have for a while. I know that there's no money in nonprofit. Like, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't expect to have a huge paycheck. But there are times where I'm like, you know, I do good for other people. Would it be so wrong for, like, the world to do a little bit of good by me? Yeah. And I realize the world does not owe me anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because if I if I had that attitude, I would be not any better than the people that I serve. Like. Right. You know, I deal with a lot of people who are very entitled, who feel like the world owes them something and they get free handouts. But really, would I want their situation? Like, no, I wouldn't. So, yeah. even even being in a position where I am able to give kind of humbles me. Because, like, I'm giving to people who have had all of their furniture destroyed by bed bugs. Like, would I want that situation? No. Right. Would I want that situation even if it means I got something for free? No. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'll take the I can't afford a gallon of milk until payday. Like, I'll take that versus, like, some of the stuff that these other people deal yeah. with. Like, I get it. Um, it's depressing, though, living paycheck to paycheck all the while you have, like, I don't know, $70,000 in college debt. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just, you know, I think, like, you were talking about at church and comparing yourself. uh uh-huh. Is this going down at negative? No, no, it's fine. Let's be negative. We deserve it. Whoa. <laughs> no, just, no, go ahead. Um, no, I, I think for women it's a little different. Like, mm-hmm. I don't feel less than when I compare myself to other women like that I know. Mm-hmm. I feel equal or like we have things in common. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the women that I know have jobs or they're very driven or they have things going on. So I don't feel... I don't feel less than. Mm. Where I feel insecure is, like, the women that are, like, they make these amazing dinners and, like, they are very good at being hostesses. I am not that person. Mm -hmm. I can make you a bomb-ass cocktail, like, for sure. Can I make you a casserole? Mm, Not so much. Um, Yeah. Like, I'm good at hosting, like, quote-unquote, like, party situations. Am I good at hosting? Yeah, where there's drinks. (laughs) Like, I can be your bartender. Um, Would I be good at... Like, hosting a dinner party? Absolutely not. Um, you know, there's some women that are very... Uh, Domesticated? Yes. I am not that woman. That's and that funny. is kind of hard because women do get competitive whether or not they, they realize it. You know, there's there's some women out there that it's like they have a perfect home, perfect little family. Everybody's got this going on. Their kids are in soccer. They're doing all these things and they have... A regimented schedule they go to the best schools then mom is just on it and I'm like I mean kudos to you that's not me right and I'm not gonna try to compete in that arena because that's not who I am and I know that mm-hmm. um you know like I'm, I'm not gonna go make you a cake from scratch I'm just not that person <laughs> no. you but do like to bake though I like to bake it's therapeutic to me I mean I'm not saying it tastes good but I, it's mm-hmm. therapeutic to me I like doing things with my hands so like, I like to make jewelry. I like to make art. I like to go into my workshop and do and get stuff done. Mm-hmm. Like, that's where mm-hmm. I feel like I can kind of thrive. Mm-hmm. Like, I am proud in that, like, when I have been the poorest, I have been able to find something to make a little bit of side money and, like, make it my own. Mm-hmm. So, I'm proud of that. Like, I'm resourceful. Mm-hmm. That's something that I have always been. So it doesn't matter if I'm broke or not. If I need to make 50 bucks, I will make 50 bucks. Yeah. Like I sold vintage clothes for a while. Um, When Luke was born, when I wasn't working. Right. You know, I'd go to Goodwill or like the thrift stores. I'd buy clothes for like a dollar. St. Vincent de Paul. St. Vincent de Paul is a great one. The uh, Justice League. Women's Assistance League. Oh. Justice League. (laughs) I used to buy clothes from superheroes. Um, (laughs) No, no. But, like, I would go, and what I would do is, like, it's who you market to. Something is worth what somebody will pay for it. Mm -hmm. And that I learned from my dad. Yeah. Um, You know, I can find an ugly shirt that was from the 60s, but if somebody wants to pay 30 bucks for that ugly shirt, that ugly shirt is worth $30. Right. 
and I'll make money for my family. Yeah, and that makes you happy too. It does. So it's it's a lot of times when yeah. a lot of people a lot of people don't when pe- when we do things people don't think it make it doesn't make sense to them, right? You enjoy doing that stuff. Because it might, it's it might a not make sense outlet. to people, but you're still doing it. Right. Um, we got married on a whim. Yeah. Didn't make sense to people. We still did it. I got so sick of the question. Uh, Are you pregnant? No, yeah. I'm not pregnant. I just yeah. we thought it would be a good time to get married, and we're ready. Yeah. And I'm tired we, of dating. I don't want to do this anymore. We thought we we raised up the question of moving to Brillos. <laughs> people don't get it. In fact, uh, I put it on Facebook, and I don't put things on Facebook very often. And that was a shitstorm. Yeah, I got like four people that just say, "Don't do it." Like they say, like, naysay, naysay, holy naysay. crap, guys. But here's the thing. You and I both have a very creative and artistic vision, and not a lot of people do that. I think, I think the people that are successful in business mm-hmm. are very business-driven, and they have that vision. I think that our vision is more, is more um, juxtaposed towards things that are eclectic and artistic. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. And maybe, and maybe that's why... Maybe that, understand. maybe that's one that's also... Maybe our attitude towards life is... That might be part of the reason why... We don't have that nice half a million dollar suburban home in the, in we, that in that nice city with with the really nice desk jobs. Be happy with that because there would be no creative yeah. outlet in that for yeah. you or I. The Some, things that inspire me are the inconsistencies. I don't know. In life. I go back and forth. I don't like going to the grocery store, praying to God that my <laughs> card doesn't get declined because I need to buy milk for my freaking kids. Your freaking um, kids. <laughs> Oh, they're sweet. They're sweet. And they're the cutest kids um, on the planet. And don't tell us otherwise. But, yeah, you're right. At the same time... Because if you like, think your kids are cuter than ours, you're wrong. Yeah. At the same time... <laughs> um, I know that what I do what I do matters. Like, I, I like that. Mm-hmm. Like, what I do matters. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not saying that your accountants, like, they don't matter. <laughs> they matter. They absolutely matter. Um, <laughs> your analysts, they matter. They're needed, I guess. I guess. Um, no, they they do. I mean, I guess we need a president. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> but I mean, it's like a trade off. I guess I don't know. There's Everything's trade-offs a trade off everywhere. Yeah. You know. Um, what are you listening to? I am listening to Vacationer a lot lately. It's um, Who's that? it's a band. They're actually coming to Meow Wolf. Oh. Very soon. Oh. Okay. Um, I kind of want to see them. They remind me a lot of the Avalanches. Um, kind of funky, like background music really kind of eclectic i don't know i just i really like it um nice. so vacation or check it out there's cool. a band anything else uh, oh dan you, arbach you, you sent me a couple of links yeah dan arbach is one um kind of slow music wasn't it and um no he's kind of southern rock ish huh. kind of reminds me of um the not the White Stripes. What am I trying to say? The other band. The the Black Keys. Hmm. White Stripes, Black Keys. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's nice. what I've been listening to. Cool. Um, I've been kind of mixing it up a little bit. Um, I've also really been enjoying the new... You, sorry. Got a piece of seed in my mouth. Anyways, uh, I've been listening... Um, I've been using the new YouTube Music app because we have Google Music, and they're transitioning to YouTube Music, which I've been really enjoying actually. Um, what? Oh, I have another band I've been listening to. I just oh, forgot the name. They're called Wilder Maker. Hmm. Um, they have a new album out. It is sweet. Wilder Maker. Yeah, nice. it's kind of folky, but also kind of rocky. But it's just very. They got a good sound. They remind me of. Um, oh my gosh! I cannot think right now. Uh, Magnetic Zeros. What's his name? Um, oh. Um, Gosh, my brain had all this um, coffee in it. Ed, no. Ed, Edward Sharp. Edward Sharp. And the Magnetic Zeros. That's what it reminds me Wilder of. Wilder what? Wilder Maker? Wilder Maker. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they remind me of Edward Sharp, the Magnetic Zeros, a little bit. Okay. Just a little more gritty, but it's the same kind of sound. It's pretty good. The top song from them is called Drunk Driver. I was listening to the one called something about jesus or god or closer to god oh yeah you sent this to me i probably did it's a new album it's really good yeah so wilder maker for you mm-hmm, and vacation yeah um i kind of have been listening i've been sometimes i'll listen to an album 
and then I'll kind of listen to it a couple months later. Yeah. For me, that's for me that's um, the Beauty Between oh. by King's Kaleidoscope. It's yeah. really good. Um, that is a good album. It's so King's Kaleidoscope. They were a Marsville band back in the day. Like just they just recreated these old hymns, which I liked. Uh-huh. Um, but now they're kind of fr- finding their creative groove. Yeah. Uh, and it's definitely not um, as worshipy, and and it, and they they have a lot. They feature a lot of like hip hop people, uh, Derek Minor, Belief, and Braille. And I think there's a yeah, Propaganda I is love on propaganda. here. Um, so I've been listening to the Beauty Between. I also uh, kind of started listening to uh, the Narrative by Show Baraka. Again, which is yeah, yeah, which is really cool. They have you were listening to them in the same musical phase the last time, like together. Yeah, which is kind of funny. Yeah, so there's that. Um, I also, yeah, what else have I been listening? Oh yeah, I, uh, I uh, went back to um, uh, Further Seems Forever mm-hmm. and been listening to them. And what else? There was another like old school band I've been listening to. I can't remember, but Further Seems Forever. And a little bit of uh, a little bit of those other two bands. So nice. There you have it. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. Like, how do I go to the? What are you trying to do? Oh, she's tra- trying to albums. navigate. What? So did you do Vacationer? Yeah. We're trying to navigate YouTube. I so, want albums though, not that one. That's the that's the artist. Oh wait, hang on. Sorry, I know this is riveting. Yeah, <laughs> rabbit. Artist, that's not, I know. But that's, that's not. That's not the band. No, that's not the album. I want this one. There we go. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah. But yeah, no vacationer. Is, I just want to. I want you to sample this because it's an interesting. They sample a lot of old school music. Just wait a minute. Okay. So this is the band that was like. The avalanches. The avalanches. Mm. Just wait for it. Okay. okay. Yeah, there's a lot of mixing and different sounds happening. I think this would sound better on better speakers, too. Yeah. Not just on my small phone speakers. The way it's mixed is really good. Yeah. It's just super good. Um, it's really good, like, driving and kind of daydreaming and just hanging out. And, like, it's, it's just lazy day summer music. Yeah, it's good. We forgot to do a Instagram TV little video. It's okay. Yeah. We should do those when we were in Missouri and New York. Yeah. Anyways. And, um, we're going to be interviewing some friends of ours, Nate and Vanessa, pretty soon here. Maybe. While we're talking about it, um, Vanessa is head of Albuquerque Mom's blog. and I would announce it because I, I doubt it's going to happen. I'm just going to say that. What? Okay. Lindsay's walking away. Hey, don't, let's not fight. I'm getting coffee. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to close out. Is that okay? I guess so. Well, if you're still here with us, you're welcome. And I hope you guys have a good day. I'm going to find the track that we close out with. <laughs> <laughs>